Hey, welcome back to Her Restored Spirit Podcast. My name is Tammy and I'm the host. And today I talk about pressure. I talk about expectations and really when we stop to look at, look at the expectations and pressures on us, where are they coming from? Have you ever thought about that? Well, I just posed a couple of questions and thoughts in today's episode, and I hope that they help you. I hope that it brings inspiration and you start to question of whether the pressures and expectations are really necessary, or can we choose a different way? Listen in. Hi friend, I am so excited that you're here to check out Her Restored Spirit podcast. If you've gone through something that has left you broken spirited, maybe it's a divorce, loss of a spouse, or even a child, loss of a job, whatever it is, I know there is restoration in your future. I'm a widowed mom, and I remember what it feels like to emerge from the fog to discover that my loss is not the center of my story, but it actually instilled in me a new hope a new understanding of faith, and a new strengthening in my heart, soul, and motherhood. I have finally understood that God has taken my test and formed it into my testimony, and that's why I'm here with you. I want you to step into your purpose, into a newfound joy, and to turn a new page in your book, because I believe you are on the brink of full restoration, unlocking a confidence that you didn't know was inside you, and understanding how to live more fruitfully with purpose, joy, and permission to be washed in possibility. It's time, friend, to reclaim your restored spirit. My dinner game over the last month has been far from like on point. I realize that we have to eat dinner every day and that around five o'clock is typical. Sometimes, you know, we have sports, so sometimes it's closer to like eight o'clock that we finally eat. But you would think that something that happens daily that I would have a better plan. And there's times that I do have a better plan, but I would say the last month, like I know what I need to do. I have lots of tools at my disposal. I just have gotten so busy that it becomes 4.30 and I'm like, I have to feed the natives again. I have to feed my kids. All right, well, let's figure this out. Well, the other day, I decided to pull out my Instapot. And I'm a little slow to the Instapot game. I've had an Instapot for a while, but I haven't really embraced it. And I kick myself because when you're not on your dinner game, the Instapot is your Hail Mary. Like that is your go-to tool that makes it so you can eat before 10 o'clock at night. And so I had some barbecue short ribs. I had some short ribs that I was like, okay, let me go ahead and try in my Instapot to make those. It's like five o'clock. So I figured, you know, by seven, we'll be eating. And and we were. Well, there's tricks to Instapot because you put it on for 45 minutes, but you have to let it get up to, to pressure. So that's 10 to 15 minutes. And then I learned probably about six months ago that you actually let it need to let it release all the pressure by itself, like naturally and gradually for it really to have that tenderness that you're looking for. So it may say 45 minutes, but you're really looking at an hour 15 to an hour and a half in time, which is fine. But I was just thinking about this, like as I as I was looking at the Instapot and it's building up steam and you hear it, you can tell that it is building up steam. The pressure is about at peak and the little, little thing, the little dobble at the top starts shaking a little bit. You start to, to hear it. Um, and do you remember the old school pressure cookers that were super dangerous? I had one of those in college. Um, I didn't use it very often because I was not very good at it. Um, but yeah, it was just super dangerous. But these Instapots, you know, it's all done for you. You just kind of plug and play and pay attention. So anyway, I made dinner and I I knew that it was going to take some time. And it dawned on me this, when I rush things and I don't allow, like the pressure builds, whether you're intentional about it or not, life adds pressure to you. 
And it's actually how you release it that's the most important. The food would be cooked if I did the, if I cheated and used a little spatula or something and moved the valve so to let it all release quickly. But it's also very dangerous and it doesn't give you the result you're looking for. And that's kind of like our life. Like the pressure is constantly building. And if we don't allow it to release naturally, then we kind of explode. One of the books that my kids and I read early on was Soda Bop Kid. And if you have kids who have like a little bit of a temper or explode or don't know how to release the valve, um, that book I highly recommend. It's called Soda Pop Kid. I think we got it from Amazon and it was amazing. But I was thinking about that as as we go through life, like there's so many pressures put on us. There's so many expectations. There's so many appearances and things that we're, how we're supposed to look, how we're supposed to dress, how we're supposed to act, how our kids are supposed to act, and what we're supposed to do in certain situations. And it's very overwhelming. And it's very inconsistent. And it's stressful to figure out, okay, this, in this instance, we are allowed to act like this, but with, in this way, you know, we act like this over here and we, or we're a little bit more casual when we're around our friends, we, you know, our speech becomes a little bit more casual, but when we're at church or in a group of people who we don't know, we're a lot more formal and reserved. Well, one of the things that I've realized over the last nine years is being a widow has a set of expectations. Being divorced has a set of expectations on what you should do and look like and act like. And it's overwhelming and it kind of keeps you in a bubble or in a place that doesn't easily allow for growth. And sometimes we put ourselves in that. We have this idea of what a widow is supposed to look like or how we're supposed to act and or the fact that, well, we've acted like this this whole time and we don't give ourselves permission to grow. Well, that's what I want to talk about today is releasing that pressure valve, how to let people in and share vulnerability because we don't want to build up pressure. Those, we need to release expectations to really step in freedom, to really step into who we are. And I was listening to a sermon by Elevation Church, and um, I wish that I knew exactly which one or which, because I was listening on a podcast, so, but he mentioned something about, don't let something that protected you for a season be what keeps you from using your gift in this next season. Meaning we all go through seasons where we're kind of protected. Things, the gift of, you know, the the early, the early stages of grief. And yes, I know there are no stages of grief, but the developmental stages of grief, we'll just say that. You put up a lot of protections around yourself. You need to protect your heart because it's so broken. You protect your body because your body has reacted in ways you had no, like it just does what it wants. I remember not being able to eat anything. And I believe I lived on plain Cheerios for a couple of days and I lost a lot of weight. And then I something happened and all of a sudden I started gaining a lot of weight. And so all the weight that I lost in an unhealthy way, I gained, I gained extra weight. Um, neither are healthy and neither could I really control. It was my body's reaction to the overwhelming amount of stress. And so again, we go through these seasons of protection. So you have to put your protection around did I allow myself to indulge in ice cream or, and everybody else around me did as well. 
which was the right thing to do in a way because I was hurting. And if I could have a moment of pleasure and hey, it was easy to hold down, you know, to eat ice cream. But it's not something that's good for you in long term. And so you've got to look at what was protecting you and then release you yourself from those expectations. You don't have to be the same person you were a year ago. You don't have to have the same likes or dislikes. You have to look at your, your life in seasons and realize that it's okay to grow. It is okay to shed those layers of protection and to show a little bit more vulnerability, to share what you're experiencing with people who, who understand and who will sit with you in it without judgment. It's okay to have a like experienced community that can say, oh, I know what you mean. And don't worry, it's just a season. Or, oh no, maybe you should have talked to somebody about that. But to be real and to be honest with your close friends and especially yourself, deciding that you're going to take those steps to grow is actually incredibly vulnerable because it it starts to shed those layers of protection that you have built around yourself and realize that you want more. And so you don't want to do it alone. Like release the expectations, talk to somebody about it. And so when we look at the pressures and the expectations on ourselves, like how, how do we identify, what do we do? And the first thing that we need to do is we should observe them. When we start to feel pressure, when we start to feel these expectations and this overwhelm put on us, identify what they are. Is it the, that you have to get everything right? Is it that you have to be the, both the mom and the dad? Is it that you have that your your kids have to act a certain way because you don't want people to think you don't have it all together? Um, is it just the expectations of yes, I can work all day, get dinner on the table, get the kids in bed by nine, and you know, all in a magical birds singing kind of way. Well, identify those stressors, identify those expectations, and then ask yourself, go through each one and say, you know, where is this coming from? What fear is attached to it? Is it coming from an external source? Are our friends putting expectations on us that are no longer valid? Do they want more for us? Do they not realize what our lives actually are like? Which it's fine. They, you know, they want the best for us. But sometimes what the season we're in doesn't look like, doesn't match up to what other people think it should. Okay, most of the time it doesn't match up to the way people think it should. Is that from other people though? Or is that from within? Are you putting internal expectations on yourself that are unreasonable? And until you identify them and ask yourself that, and then you talk to people who get it, you may not ever realize that that's really what's going on. And you can release that expectation. Step in the freedom of choice and decide, okay, during this season, we may be doing a lot of crockpot meals, but even that takes planning ahead. Okay, we may be doing a lot of burgers because I can take it straight from the freezer and throw them on the grill. So be it. My kids may not be eating every, you know, every night at five o'clock. Because we have sports, it may be 4.30 or maybe eight. Releasing the expectation and what it's supposed to look like. Because life doesn't look like it's supposed to. What is supposed to even mean? We have this ideal picture in our mind that we're trying to live up to. Be vulnerable with yourself and release those. Look for the good of the season that you're in. Look for the good of the season that other people are in as well. 
So identify where are these stressors and these expectations coming from? Are they being placed on us and are they unreasonable? Are we placing them on ourselves internally and they're unreasonable? And then that's the third question is ask, ask, are these legit? Are these expectations one that are really aligned with my value? You know, parenting is really hard, especially when you factor in kids' free will and they don't do everything you ask them to do or rarely do everything you ask them to do because they don't want to or because they have other ideas. They have expectations in that are also unreasonable. But realizing, okay, my ultimate goal is I want kids who hold their values, hold the values that we hold dear. And not only hold them for me, but I want them to hold them for themselves. I want them to embody the value of kindness and and self-control and gratitude and selflessness. So these are the expectations that I that are legit and that I cannot set down. That these are the ones that I need to hold dear. The expectations that my kids act appropriately in every situation, that's not even possible. They're still learning. And I have to stop placing that as an expectation on myself for them to do that. Again, they have free will and they do what they want. And yeah, as an Enneagram one, it is hard for me to say that, but it's true. And when I release that expectation, I teach them, I guide them. But ultimately, the expectations I need to put on myself are the ones that, are they distributing, are they exhibiting the values that we hold dear? And truthfully, not always, but we're still working on it. You know, they're learning. And again, it's a process because I want them to become theirs, not just mine, that I, it's expectation from me. And so are these expectations legitimate? Also, what meaning did you have on these expectations? What meaning do you have on these things that you're you're wanting from yourself trying to get it all right what does that mean does that mean that you'll have it it will appear that you have it all together and you won't be you know others won't see you as the sad divorced mom or the sad widow well maybe it just keeps them at an arm's length because well clearly she's got it you know she doesn't need help or she's she doesn't want to talk about it but that's not what you're trying to portray. So what meaning do you put on things? Why are you putting those expectations on yourself? And is there a better way to do it? And again, by talking it over and saying to a friend, okay, what, this is the expectation that I have and this is the meaning. Is there another way? Is this one that it's worth it? And sometimes you have to ask it, you have to answer it yourself, but by talking it over, by verbally processing it, whether it's just out loud to yourself or to a friend, it helps you to really identify what is your heart in this moment? What is your deepest desire and what fear? Ask yourself, what fear is attached to it? Am I afraid that I will fail or appear to be to to fail as a single parent if I don't get my kid to practice on time every day. Well, it's not even possible. I have two kids who play one sport each that happen to practice on the same day at the exact same time. So I attempted to do it. And then finally, I broke down and asked for help. Like the my daughter's coach will come and pick her up and then I will then I will get her after practice and then get to my son. And if I'm not able to, they will drop her off back at home. And I am so thankful that I asked for help. I'm so thankful that I shared my burden and, and let down my guard. And instead of trying to figure out how to appear that I had it all together, I was able to share that, be vulnerable and say... I don't, I can't do this. And there's people there who are willing to say, oh, well, let me help. So what pressure 
do you need to release? What expectations? Vulnerability is not a weakness. It really is a strength. Showing your heart to someone and letting them see your what your seemingly weakness is, is actually, you have to be really strong in order to do that. And your weakness, is it really a weakness or is it just an expectation you've put on yourself that you're not able to meet? But it wasn't legit in the first place. It wasn't one that's even possible. Is it the meaning that you put on it was so strong, but why? Why did you put give it that meaning? What other meaning can you add to it? When I realized that, that I can just simply change the way I think about something, that was one of those light bulb moments that is like, oh, and I, I learned that when um, I know that one of the popular therapies right now is cognitive behavioral therapy. It talks about your thoughts are actually controlled by your feelings are controlled by your thoughts and your actions are controlled by your feelings and thoughts. And if you want to change something, if you change the way you think about things, everything changes. Our brains have the power to make us feel a certain way. Again, I I talked about it early on when it comes to rainy days, how I decided early on that I love rainy days and they still make me happy. It's because when I see it, I choose to think happy thoughts. I choose to see the positive. Now, I also know that it ruins our plans. I know that my daughter has missed softball games because of the rain, because of the thunder and lightning, and okay. But letting her see the possibilities of changing her thoughts about it, just realizing that there's another choice to make, another meaning you can give it, will help you reframe your circumstances. The pressures you're under, change the meaning of them. Share them with a friend and have have her help you look at it from a different perspective. So systematically release each expectation you've put on yourself. Give yourself that freedom to think another way. It's also okay to add expectations to yourself for growth and to look at what expectations are outdated. Are they serving you? Like, again, look at the meaning you've you've given it and that protection. And it goes back to don't let something that protected you for a season keep you from the gifts of this season. Were your expectations... And the pressures you put on yourself, are they still valid? Did you need those for a season to get through it? And now it's a new season of growth and and experiences and vulnerability. Is it time to be a little bit more vulnerable and start to grow and consider your options and consider what life could look like if you changed your expectations Maybe you need to add a few more expectations to yourself on how you relate to other people or how you step into situations that may ask for a little courage. Maybe it's time to start changing the meaning of things and realize that you don't have to be the the widow sitting on the front pew wearing the black hood. Maybe it's time to wear some color. Maybe it's time to show that you still have your widow card, even if you are happy, even if you have joy in your life, even if you experience new things, even if you're a little more vulnerable and talk about the real pressures that you're facing, it's okay. Every step we take, we become a newer version of ourselves, a stronger version of ourselves, or a weaker, depending on if we decide to, to sink into negative behaviors, negative habits. 
but look at the expectations and decide, are they valid? Are they getting me what I want? Are they create, helping me to create a life that I want? And I will tell you that one of the best things you can do is walk the journey with someone who has been through it before. Walk with someone who knows what it's like and is pursuing growth for themselves. Don't let the expectations other people have put on you or the expectations that you've placed on yourself to keep you in the same perpetual cycle that's not giving you life. Find a community. Join her Restored Spirit community. There is a community of women who we are growing together setting expectations that are real and valid and life-giving and removing expectations from ourselves and others that are not. Come to a safe space where you can talk about your real struggles and understand that you're not alone. But in order to grow, you have to be willing to be vulnerable. You have to be willing to step out, release that pressure valve, and let it go slowly instead of using, just like the pressure cooker, you don't want to turn, take that knob, that doggle or whatever it's called. You don't want to take it off and just let all the pressure escape, but you want to do it slowly so that way you can control the outcome a little bit more. You have a little more say in the direction your life is going. Not saying that we know, because believe me, these steps that we take, it may put us in a completely different, it may put us in a whole nother path that we were not expecting. But it doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean it's not scary. How exciting is it that we have tomorrow to look forward to and that we get to choose today what's going to affect our tomorrow. We can choose to grow and we can choose life and we can do it together. So I want to encourage you to come find us on social. Come find us on Facebook, the Her Restored Spirit community. And come and be part of a community that support each other. And release the expectations. Come and start to see the possibilities and the opportunities and the hope in your story. And the growth that's possible. Who knows where it's going to lead you? But how exciting is it to be able to figure that out? I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you start to realize that a lot of times we ourselves are what's keeping us from growing. We have these expectations or we've these unrealistic ideas of what we should be doing or how we should be acting. And if we start to really look at those and decide if they're valid or not, if they're serving us well or not, if they're allowing us to get a future that we're deserving of or not, we get to make a different choice. And so I just want to encourage you to take a look and identify the stressors, identify where they're coming from. Are they internal? Are they external? Are they coming from society, from friends, from family? Are they coming from yourself? And decide if you're going to keep them or not, because it really is your choice. And then once we make that choice, we get to identify it again. Does this work? The best part about making a choice and learning from it is you have more information So if you didn't make the right choice the first time, you have a second time to do it and it's going to be okay. Thank you so much for tuning in to Her Restored Spirit podcast. It really is an honor to share with you each week and I hope that you're getting something out of it. I hope that it's really helping, refreshing your soul and just realizing that we're all in this together and we all make mistakes, but it's okay because we can learn from them and grow. But I wanted to tell you and see if you've had time to check out my new website. Have you been there in a while? 
It's, I completely revamped it and I would love for you to go and check it out. It's www.tammymariecoaching.com, T-A-M-I-M-A-R-I-E. So go check it out. And while you're there, sign up for my newsletter. Until then, bye for now.